Hello, this is Nathan Crutchfield, and let's talk briefly about the use of the risk matrix. The risk matrix or risk assessment matrix allows us to do a number of things. First, it is a quick method that we can use to visualize risk, bring an intangible into view for those we have to share our concerns with. It helps us prioritize risk reduction measures and compare risk reduction measures in a visual manner. It helps us consider incident probability. It also helps us consider the severity that could result. This is a risk matrix. There are a number of different variations of these in various textbooks and, and articles. This one is taken from the ANSI Z10 2005. If you'll note on the left column, we have the likelihood of occurrence or exposure and the estimate of potential frequency. This ranges from the bottom left corner of improbable, very unlikely, to remote, not likely to occur, occasional, likely to occur at some time, probable, likely to occur several times, to frequent, which is likely to occur repeatedly. Across the top and the other columns from left to right, we have catastrophic, meaning the situation or the exposure could lead to death or permanent total disability. Then we have critical, disability in excess of three months, marginal, minor injury or lost workday accident, and finally negligible, which is a first aid or minor medical treatment. The intersection of the potential severity and the potential frequency gives us a rating. In this case, we've assumed a particular situation is probable. In other words, the exposure is likely to occur several times. We believe from our discussions with employees and others that in study of our loss history that it could result in a disability in excess of three months. By using the matrix, we identify we have a high risk and we don't believe the operation should be per, um, permitted until controls are put into place or alternatives developed. We may develop our alternatives and we can then reassess our risk. In this case, we might assume that we have changed the risk to being remote, not likely to occur, and that the severity would be marginal. This gives us a medium risk where we can take remedial action at the appropriate time. We can now compare this against our previous risk and see the relative scale that we've changed the situation by. Also, this would allow us to evaluate risk and set priorities. Obviously, the one that is a high risk, operation not permissible, should be worked on in advance of the medium risk. But we need to use the risk matrix with caution. One, uh, discuss and review with supervisors and employees. Do they understand the risk? Do you understand the risk? Does everyone agree on the assessment? And do not block communication or throw obstacles in the way. You need a very good open dialogue when you're trying to determine risk. Is the review and research history available? Have you studied what has happened in your industry in similar situations or exposures uh, to various hazards? Uh, what do you know about the uh, organizational loss history? You need to do a reality check. Could the severity be greater? Could the exposure be more frequent? Lots of discussion and review. Finally, the matrix only gives a relative way to set priorities and rank order risk. This is not set in concrete. Like I say, there's a number of different variations of the risk matrix. This is one on we presented here, which we think would be a benefit to you if you use it on a, consi a consistent and routine basis. I look forward to discussing with you uh, future risk management and job hazard analysis uh, topics. For additional information, join us at myjobhazardanalysis.com. The materials and discussions for this blog are based on Job Hazard Analysis, a guide for voluntary compliance and beyond, written by James Routon and Nathan Crutchfield, published by Butterworth Heinemann in 2008. Thanks for your time, and we look forward to talking with you in the future.